Hi, it's Brenda Luther here again and starting our second webinar for SK2 and talking about developing a research question to support your literature review. As I said in the webinar before this, you really start to, to prepare your argument through a problem and a purpose statement and then your research questions are what remains before you really start to investigate your literature review. So you can um, view that webinar or view this one first. This one may, um, either of them uh, should be able to stand on their own, but typically you want to look at the, the first one, the research purpose and problems first. Let's look at research questions. And again, I, I think I told you before I'm using Hauser. Uh, she states that uh, uh, research questions outline the primary components that will be studied. So when I look at that statement of hers, I realize that it, it needs to be a little more explicit for us. A research question, you are stating the primary components, and uh, that means variables, setting, that will be studied in a question, putting them in a question. And I know we will get to, uh, you're probably in your mind is, well, Brenda, what's a hypothesis versus a research question? And we'll definitely get there in this discussion. And before we get, begin again, I want to tell you that I'm really relying heavily on Hauser just because I wanted to give you another view of uh, these concepts than Tappan, and I love both of these texts, so please rely on them heavily yourselves. Uh, research questions are based on your problem and your purpose statement, and, they're ba and they are based on your setting and your population. What you wrote about in your introduction starts to lead your argument and show the reader what your purpose is, and then you will form a research question. So while the problem states the why and the purpose uh, communicates the intent, the research question and your resulting hypotheses give guidance for your study. And they tell your reader, this is what Brenda is going to study. They act as your final step before you're ready to design your own study, which is SQT2. So let's look at research questions. Uh, clarity, simplicity, direction, and a focus on your research process. These aren't typically long. They're less than a paragraph. Sometimes studies have two research questions, one, four. They're simple statements that you can work on forever. If you like doing Sudoku or uh, crossword puzzles, uh, you might enjoy word crafting on your research question statements. Now, hypotheses are different than a question. They're a statement. They're a declarative statement. And they guide your analysis, what stats you're going to use. They talk about expected outcomes. They're really a question reworded into a statement. And they also st state the expected relationships and sometimes the direction. I'll give you some examples of those. So let's look at a research question. I've got three of them here. What affects the physical activity for children? What affects physical activity for children with physical disabilities. What are the main minutes of exercise for school-aged children? Uh, what would the introduction of a home-based physical activity intervention change? So you can see they kind of build upon each other. I'm asking the overall, what what is physical activity for kids with disabilities? Uh, what do they really do? How much physical activity do they really do? Uh, what would How could we change their level level of physical activity? So now these can all move to hypotheses, and we've all seen these, the null hypotheses. Uh, also, there's a non-directional hypotheses or directional. And I put on here in yellow, really, do I have to do that? You know, for a master's thesis, you really don't. You don't have to focus on hypotheses. You're, you will, for these courses, they will say, what are your hypotheses? Um, if you have them formulated, give them. If you don't, make them up or not make them up, but make your research questions into hypotheses. But really, do you need a hypothesis versus a research question? You don't. Um, a research question can form your capstone project and your questions for your topic. But um, you can move them into hypotheses as well. So an example of these are briefly a null hypothesis me means that you're going to study something and between the two groups there is nothing there is no difference it's null effect so you can say uh, mean minutes of education for school-aged children with physical dis disabilities are no different 
than those without physical disabilities. That's the null hypothesis. You're always trying to prove the null hypothesis is not true. So your study, if you ran off this null hypothesis, you could you would say your study might prove that there is a difference. But do you really know what difference it is? Is it less or more? So a null hypothesis, while we do it, um, doesn't really tell us much. So we we sometimes we do non-directional hypotheses. So we can say, well, this is the same thing as the null, and it's just saying uh, mean minutes of exercise may be more or may be less, or an, a, an intervention at home may or may not change these two groups. Or we can have a directional hypothesis where we're going to make a declarative statement saying we think mean minutes of exercise are less for children with disabilities than without disabilities. Uh, we think that an introduction of a home-based intervention will increase mean minutes of exercise. So that's the direction. We're just saying what we think it'll be, more or less. Um, so let's go back to hypotheses where they have a direction and expected outcome. You really want to give your reader as much dec declaration of what you think is happening. So you, what are these expected outcomes going to do? Mean minutes of exercise for children with disabilities are less than children without. Or the introduction of physical activity intervention will increase um, mean minutes. So the increase of the mean minutes could also be an expected outcome besides the direction. I guess the outcome is really the mean minutes. I should have had that in red for you. So, that's the difference between a hypothesis and a research question. And you're definitely going to work on your research questions, but there are also types of research questions. And Hauser puts them in these types. Tappan kind of uh, pushes them in other ways. But basically, there are, are these four types. A descriptive, where we just say how many. So if you go back to the mean minutes, you know, what are the mean minutes of physical activity for children with disabilities? Um, analytical, what are the differences? So what are the differences between children with physical activities or physical disabilities and those without physical disabilities? Or what is the relationship, correlational studies? Or a prospective, what condition occurs with? So um, say, you know, for all the, the, the kids who went to a um, integrated school, do they have more physical activity than those that go to purely a, a school with disabilities. So you're measuring them going forward. Or what were the conditions occurring with? So we measure and go retrospectively. And I'll briefly go over these a little bit. Um, descriptive, how many, what are, what's going on. It's the most basic of research. And it really helps us describe the phenomenon under study, what's happening with our clients that we care for. Descriptive research is very common, very popular and very much an appropriate um, master's degree uh, project for you to do. You're just describing what's going on. If you think about the research that's made an impact in, on your knowledge, it pro perhaps is descriptive research because it just may have opened your eyes to, oh, children with physical disabilities have this many mean minutes of physical activity, or a home-based intervention does this, just knowing um, what it does because we naturally know that more physical activity is going to be better for kids. We don't necessarily know how it's better for them. We don't have some outcomes that are prospective in the future that we measured, but we just know clinically, logically, that that's a value. So descriptive research is very valuable to us and very common. Analytic research starts to look at the differences in groups. So you have um, comparison of a pre- and a post-op group or a pre-teaching group and a post-teaching group, educational intervention or something. You know, these comparison studies, they're a higher level of statistical analysis. And typically t-tests or chi-squared or other, other research uh, statistics are used to um, make this analytical evaluation of the data. Correlational studies, what is the relationship? You know, if somebody has this, what happened? Do they are they more likely to have that? So you're looking at a lot of variables and you're also trying to find variables that can predict another variable. A higher level of statistical analysis. 
prospective studies, looking what's going to happen in the future. So you're collecting people into a study, and then you're going to measure different variables over points in time. And you can, all, you can automatically see a prospective study has more time involved because you're not just doing a cross-sectional measurement at one point in time and saying what's going on between these variables. You have to collect them going into the future. So you have uh, more time, more commitment. That's a, a more rigorous piece of research. But you can also look at many prospective questions retrospectively. We certainly measure a lot of data. A retrospective study is primary research, but you're looking at what occurred in the past and you're correlating, measuring. And also the data that you're looking at wasn't collected for your purposes. So hopefully it was collect collected accurately in the way that values your, your topic and your questions. So retrospective chart reviews are um, very common in medicine and certainly with the advent of the electronic medical record we have lots of retrospective data to look at. So you're probably thinking, what should I do for my research questions? Brenda's overwhelmed me uh, with all these, these uh, statements and all these types. Um, try not to let me overwhelm you ever, because um, really your research questions are your research questions, and, and I know you can figure out how to measure them. Think about what your sample is available to you, what your setting is, and what your time frame is. Maybe that changes what your research questions are, what is doable for you. Certainly your master's capstone is not, does not have to be your end-all piece of research. It can be your beginning and um, more often is framed to what you can get a hold of to research. And so soon you'll be ready for your methods and um, that will be another webinar. But before you start your methods, let's think of what SK, SK2, SKT2 should bring you. It should bring you a general focus of interest, the identification of your problem, which we talked about, uh, your problem and your purpose statement and the gaps in uh, the other webinar. It should give you a good problem statement with the gaps of knowledge and the purpose of your research, thus the purpose of what I'm investigating is, you know, how school-aged children with physical disabilities increase their mean minutes of physical activity. So my research questions are the following, and you typically have, you know, two, four, five research questions that will set you up to start building your methods of how to inquire on these questions. Thanks for coming to this webinar, and um, I hope it helped, and please feel free to call me. Bye.